we all of this is well and good provided we are, you know we know that we upper bar is equal to v lower bar and the the that that condition the if there is irritating because you know it tells you the all of this nice story works provided we upper bar is equal to v lower bar and we already have seen an example where it is where the two are not equal okay so question then becomes okay what can how can you resolve this and this is this is where we basically need a next new idea you need a new idea you need a, a new way to think about about the strategic situation okay. so all this reasoning is uh, so far is is good but we have we have sort of limited ourselves to a particular way of viewing the options at hand which is that a player has to play a particular row or a particular column if you think of essentially the strategies that players are exposed to in a game right the strategies that they have in a game in many cases these strategies can be thought of as as uh, let's say you know suppose a, a general wants to decide you know how much which of his uh, he has to decide whether he wants to take this route or that route that is thought of one kind of way of visualizing the strategy instead of saying that i want to should i go to this route or should i go to that route instead of having that sort of dilemma a general might also ask okay if i have 1000 troops how many should i send to this route and how many should i send to that route right so many times the kind of strategies that we have with us can, can be interpreted as something on as a as a set of options on such that we don't have to pick only one of those options but rather we can decide that how much of our resources are to be allocated to each option okay so for example so in the case of the general he has to decide okay i have 1000 troops maybe i send 300 here and 700 here okay or if you are if you are a fund manager you have uh, you have 1 lakh rupees maybe i put 25000 in this project and 75000 in that project okay so this this way once you start thinking about it this way then the options that a that you have that a player has are not just merely to to commit to a particular row or a column but rather to decide the extent of commitment to each row or column all right now this extent of commitment can be thought of in many many different ways one is that as i said is a resource allocation so you can think okay how much resources am i devoting to each option the other way, other way is to say well what i am going to do is i am going to pick a row or a column at random okay and i am going to pick it at random but i am going to choose very wisely the probability with which i am going to be choosing each each of my choices all right this now expands the strategy space so now you are not just picking a particular row or a particular column as a player what you are actually doing is picking a A, every row essentially with with some probability and what you have to decide is the probabilities that you are going to assign to each row or each column right so this is what is called a mixed strategy a mixed strategy is basically a randomized choice of a pure strategy so this is one way of interpreting it but uh, this is mathematically this is good enough so we'll just use this description is a randomized choice of a pure strategy And what is a pure strategy whatever we have the the strategies we were talking of so far they are what are called we will call them pure strategies pure strategies are definite choices of rows or columns mixed strategies are randomized choices on top of pure strategies okay so these pure strategies are you know, what you know rows uh, rows and columns and a randomized choice of the same is what is called a, a mixed strategy so formally a mixed strategy
is a probability distribution. on the space of pure strategies. Or equivalently, the space of pure strategies, equivalently a random variable takes values in the set of yeah. so a mixed strategy is just like pure strategies are for each player the mixed strategy is also for each player so each player now has to write, has to do make a randomized choice over his set of pure strategies okay so the 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 probability with which you play with which uh, you uh, the player plays is the choice that he has to now make okay so it's uh, when many people use this word randomized in a in a in a kind of loose way many people use the word randomized in a kind of loose way where they when they say pick something at random they actually mean some pick it uniformly at random okay we, everything with equal probability but that's not what we mean here by random we mean with the probability distribution and the probability distribution has to be chosen with uh, in a strategic way is this clear okay all right so then in this case now can you tell me mathematically what is the what would be the probability distribution for the row player so the row player the pure strategy is for the row player for the row player the pure strategies are the rows are the rows okay, okay and suppose there are m rows yeah, yeah. so m rows suppose for th then what are his uh, what uh, what is a mixed strategy for the row player a mixed strategy for the row player is now a probability distribution on this set of m rows right so how do i describe that so i need to tell you a probability with which i'm going to choose every row okay so let's def let's write it like this let yi be the probability of choosing row i probability of choosing row i okay now if this is the probability of choosing row i now what must these y i satisfy how many y i's are there there are m of them okay how and uh, how what should these y i's satisfy yeah so this because this is a probability distribution it has to satisfy that so firstly so so let me just write it like this let y be this y1 to ym okay a composite vector just i put them together uh, y1 to ym there are m of them and these are all greater than equal to 0 right and they also satisfy that the sum of these ys is equal to 1 So this here, this let's call this capital Y. This capital Y is the set of mixed strategies for the row player. So every mixed strategy for the row player can be written in is basically uh, uh, can be expressed in this form it basically is a vector of length m now the components are greater than equal to 0 and they sum to 1 ok 
okay and you interpret the ith component as the probability with which player that the row player is going to play row i okay all right what is similarly now for the column player let's denote it by z suppose there are n columns then the, what is the mixed strategy for the column player the, the mixed the mixed strategy for the column player is a vector now z1 to zn these z's are all greater than equal to 0 these z's are all greater than equal to 0 and they have the property that if you sum them sum these z's they sum to 1 let's let's call this as a set capital z and this is the set of mixed strategies for the column player okay. now if they play these strategies A strategy y if play, row player plays a strategy y from capital y and z and column player plays a strategy z from capital z then he they are going to now get a payoff which is going to be which is going to be a random variable because it's going he's going to randomly choose an actual column and an actual uh, an actual row he just decides decides the probability with which they are being chosen using capital y using these y and z Okay. So, players decide the, prob the, the probabilities with which these are to be chosen, but they have to actually act a column or a row. Hmm. So, which means that now the row that is chosen, so row i is going to be chosen uh, randomly, row j is going to be chosen randomly. So, he, the, player, the players would get a payoff a i j okay, when row i is chosen and row j is chosen. Now, what is the probability with which i is chosen and j is chosen? Y i z j. Why? Okay, but why are they independent? Non-cooperative. The game is non-cooperative. Players cannot communicate with each other. They have to randomize independently. Right? So, because they randomize independently, See, the, at the end of the day, if I want to define a random payoff, I have to define for you the joint distribution of the row and column. I have only defined for you the marginal distributions, which is the probability of choosing a row and the probability of choosing a column separately. Right? Now, from the marginals, if I want to be able to generate the joint, uh, in general, I would need some more, more information. But then that would also require the players to coordinate between themselves if they have to correlate them their, their choices right so since the players cannot communicate with each other this automatically means that player the choices are, to, are being made independently okay so the probability that you see uh, row i and column j being chosen is the probability that you see row i being chosen times the probability that you see row j being chosen so, the payoff now that the players are going to get is this random payoff, they get this payoff with this probability. Okay. Now, and then, so whenever there is a stochastic payoff involved, so there is, you can, uh, this can be shown very, very formally, uh, but essentially remember that what you need, what the player must do then is to look at the expected value. So, the expected value of this is what players have to do, have to now. This is actually the payoff that they receive. So, yeah. So there is a there is there is a, a theory of utility from which you can show that uh, under a set of axioms of rationality, wh what a player must do is maximize the expected payoff or expected utility. And in short, so whenever there is a stochastic outcome, what you need to look at is the expected value of it. You could have looked at other things, you could have looked at its variance, you could have looked at its tail probability, you could have looked at its max, etc, etc. But why should you look at its mean? Well, there is a, there is a, there is a reason for that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, naturally, because every, you know, I have to compute the expected value. Yeah. 
okay so the so in other words the 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 let's call this something let's call this j of y comma z that is equal to equal to this and in fact i can write this out in more compact form as this is just simply y transpose az so i can think of y and z these as column vectors okay so i these two capital y and capital z these two i'll think of these as column vectors column vectors if these are column vectors then this sum is essentially just uh, can be written in this sort of form it's y transpose az is clear so now what you have is a zero sum game but where the strategies are y and z earlier the strategies were i and j now the strategies are y and z player the row player is looking to pick a distribution on the rows to minimize to get the least expected value here which is the least value of j the column player is looking to pick a distribution on the columns to get the maximum value of j okay it's still a zero sum game but with these now as their strategies the distributions as their strategies so what the players have to do is strategically decide with what probabilities are they going to be playing each of their uh, each of their particular rows or row, row or column so we can once again define something analogous to what we did earlier since this is just a, again a zero sum game but in a different strategy space i can once again talk of the same logic that i did so far each player is looking to make maximum damage to the other each player can think of the worst case damage that the other can do and try to minimize that worst case damage yeah correct correct so the strategies now are the y's and z's yes which conditional probability yes so the players pick a distribution and that is and play with that that is the that is the assumption so it's it the play the game is just played once just what they need to decide is the distribution okay so the randomized choice is a very is a very convenient thing because it can be applied in any situation that interpretation of a mixed strategy but the problem with that is also that um, you know um, and it's also you know gives you a proper interpretation as a probability measure and then you can compute expectations and so on the problem with, uh, with that is may, you know there is the way to um, or if you want to give it an operational interpretation like exactly how is the game played out many many people then try to think of the game being played multiple times okay so if the game so but remember that is not what is being done here we are not assuming that the game is played multiple times and this is not the frequency with which so y is not the frequency with which player i chooses row i if the game was being played multiple times the players would also strategize in a different way knowing that you know this is the game is going to be played in such and such way and that leads to a different analysis altogether it's called a repeated game that is not what is being done here it's not the frequency with which they are playing uh, these strategies it's a random choice so you should be comfortable thinking of probability without thinking of frequency of use okay uh, so it is a random choice arising out of a sophisticated design of the probability distribution is this clear so a vector y star in capital y is a mixed security strategy for the row player if look at this his payoff look at the worst case damage that the column player could do to him okay and the 
this here is called the mixed security level denoted as VMFA. VM upper bar of A. And likewise, the vector uh, Z star NZ is a mixed security strategy column player if Okay. So, this, this is how we can define now the corresponding security strategies. So, these are security strategies in the sense of security strategy, so they are in the sense of distributions. So, in terms of mixed strategies, what are the security strategies they should be playing? So, what kind of distribution gives them a certain guarantees the players a certain amount of a certain payoff? That is what is being uh, defined here. Okay. Now, uh, because now, so how many mixed strategies does a player have? How many mixed strategies does a player have? Infinitely many, right? Necessarily, because every distribution, probability distribution is a mixed on pure strategies is a mixed strategy, right? So, if he has at least two pure strategies, he will have infinitely many mixed strategies. So, the set of mixed set of strategies now has become infinite, okay? It is the when you go to mixed strategies, automatically the set of strategies is now becomes uh, becomes infinite. So, it is actually not that straightforward to now say even that a, y, a security strategy actually exists, showing that there exists such a Y star that satisfies this particular property is itself not, uh, it itself requires a proof. So, you need to prove that there exists a Y star which satisfies it. Earlier all you did was you know you could just check over columns then rows and so on and you could immediately derive that. Now, why does there even exist a distribution like this has to be shown, a distribution that is better than all other distribution, ok. So, that is that is one this thing and so, once you show, once the question of existence is uh, uh, along, along with the question of existence, you also have therefore, a question of a, whether mixed security levels can be thought of as well defined, all right. So, so, this, this needs some amount of work. So, this needs some analysis. You need to show that there exists actually a mixed strategy, strategy for each player. But assuming there exists one, we now, we, we will, we have the same properties that we had earlier. We have that, we always have have Vm upper bar greater than equal to Vm lower bar. This was, this can be shown in just the same logic that we did, that we had earlier, ok. So, we always have this particular thing. Now, we move to this particular regime of where, uh, where now players are allowed to randomize, but we need to still justify what is it that uh, is being uh, how exactly are players gaining from randomization, ok. So, to see how players gain from randomization, let us let us do one, let us observe one simple property. Can you tell me what is the relation between V m upper bar and V upper bar? How are these related? V m upper bar is? smaller why you are taking ok so one that is one of the arguments that the, that is uh, so so vm upper bar is 
the, cl the claim is Vm upper bar is smaller than V upper bar and the reason that is the case is because mixed strategies are more general than pure strategy, right. Pure strategy can be thought of as a mixed strategy with where only particular pure strategy is given probability 1 and all other strategies are given probability 0. But is that enough? Because if you see how Vm has been defined, remember, okay, yes, the mixed strategies are more general for um, than the pure strategies, but you are also maximizing over now, earlier you are doing max over j, now you are doing max over z. So, the maximization is also being done over a larger set, okay. Okay, okay. So, so that is, so that, that's where the subtlety is basically and, and the answer is correct. So, it is true that Vm is smaller. So, in fact, I will write out the more, uh, more general thing. We of course, have this thing that I have written out here, but we also have V upper bar of A is greater than equal to V m upper bar of A is greater than equal to V m lower bar of A, which is in turn greater than equal to V lower bar of A, ok. And so, let us let us actually prove one of these inequalities. So, let us prove this one for example, ok. So, I am going to assume that a mixed security strategy exists, ok, for the moment. So, uh, what is a mixed security strategy? It is a Y star such that Y star transpose A Z max over this, this is less than equal to max over z y, tra y transpose a z. So, actually we can only focus on the left hand side and just look at this more carefully. This y star transpose a is a row vector multiplying with a column vector z having components z1 to zn. Right. Now, what are these, these z1 to zn? z1 to zn are simply uh, these, these, this is together a probability distribution, right. So, these are all essentially some kind of weights, they add up to 1, they are all greater than equal to 0. So, when you want to maximize this over z, ok, we have, we wanted to maximize this thing over z, ok, we want to maximize this quantity over z we have to basically decide what weights should these components z1 to zn get. So, how, what should be the weights? Precisely. So, I look at the column that has the largest value, ok, here. I look at the, co uh, the column that has the largest value and pick that one and give that z probability 1 and all the others probability 0, weight equal to 1 and the, all the others get weight 0. So, so, this actually therefore is equal to, so the left hand side here, this is actually equal to the max over j of or actually let me just write this for the right hand side, in fact that, that will make things easier for me. So, I will write this for y transpose. Right. So, you pick the largest column, uh, largest value from this row vector y transpose a, give that particular guy to weight 1 and everything else 0, that has to be the ma maximum value over all, over all possible weighted combinations like this. Okay. So, now therefore, now you have basically the same thing that we had earlier, because this is actually now, so now minimizing this, minimizing this over y in y, minimizing the max over j of y transpose a j. This is naturally more general than minimizing over every row, because if I took a, because I can take y to be a pure strategy and then I would get just a i j there. So, if y is a pure strategy,
y transpose a j becomes equal to just a. the pure strategy i let's say then this becomes a i j right so that means if y is a pure strategy means what it gives probability 1 to row i and all other rows get probability 0 then in that case this becomes so therefore this is therefore more general it's uh, than than minimizing over rows itself so consequently uh, the minimizing value has to be lower because you are minimizing over a larger set right so minimizing over uh, minimizing the minimum value has to be has to be lower uh, because the set of mixed strategies is a larger set so consequently we get this inequality here that vm upper bar has to be less than equal to v v upper bar same thing can be argued even on the other side and we get that v vm lower bar is greater than equal to v lower bar the first one yeah 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 the same same sort of argument uh, as before so i can just show this to you so so you just have you have j of y comma z as this right and uh, take any any this this is always um, uh, greater than equal to the min over min over y in y y transpose a z and it is always less than equal to the max over z in z of y transpose a z ok if you want again as if you want I can put a dash here if you, if you are getting confused this is always the case and so now what I have on the left hand side is a function of y and I have right hand side is a function of z function of y alone and z alone and it is all the left hand side is always greater than equal to the right hand side. So, which means the least value of the left hand side is greater than equal to the largest value of the right hand side ok. So, that and then so the min over y y max over z in z of y transpose a z this is greater than equal to max over z min over y and this is this is this here is your vm lower bar and this is vm upper bar so actually this this doesn't require you know this kind of form in fact you can do this for any function take a function of two variables the min max is always going to be greater than or equal to the max min that uh, that holds for any function okay. all right hmm. It still has the same issues still there no so okay so uh, i don't want to uh, take away the punch line but essentially we still have this here the inequality it's it's no different from the inequality we started with which was this is greater than or equal to this okay so what will happen in the next class is that i'll show that this is in fact equal okay V bar of a not equal to that's because there could be in general. This is this is certainly more general than the than that. Okay, all right. So the reason for that is uh, okay. Maybe I can just talk about that here. Yeah. So why are these not equal? So we we just showed that v upper bar is greater than equal to v uh, v m upper bar. But then why are they not equal? The reason they are not equal is if you see this this expression here. I just said that if you take y to be a pure strategy, take y to be a pure strategy i, then the then this then this just reduces to a i j. Now the reason this is um, this is not the same as uh, max minimizing over pure strategies is because this now the resulting 
expression that you have here is not linear in y anymore. The this expression here was linear in z for a fixed y it was linear in z. So, therefore, you, you had to just find the weight uh, the coefficient with the largest with, uh, the largest coefficient and give that the full weight. Whereas, if you see this here this is not linear in y anymore this is the max of linear functions and the maximum of linear functions is actually uh, is is you know the way it looks would be the maximum of linear functions take this function take this function what would be the maximum of these two it would be this region up to this point you know up to this point the second one is uh, larger after that point the other one becomes larger and this is now a max of several such linear functions right n of these linear functions. So, it is not linear anymore and because it is not linear anymore it is not you cannot uh, uh, claim that this is that the uh, the same way as before you know you cannot pick a component see the because the component has now gone inside here in, it is hidden inside this maximization even if you did pick a component there would still be outside a max over j which will keep switching uh, uh, based on what uh, what y you have uh, chosen the maximizing j right for some y's for some y's it will be this j that is maximum some some other y's it will be this j that is maximum mm. Yes. So, so ok. So, it, that is I was going to show that next time, but actually so what you are asking is is this uh, is this uh, equal is this going to be uh, strict in general right. Yes. So, there you can show many functions for which this is the case ok, but, but this is already telling us one justification for moving to mixed strategies. The randomization has benefited both players. Each player has improved his security level by randomization, right? Hmm. 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 Is pure strategies, yeah. No, no. So that, so that, that's where this is subtle. So, so you will, so we'll again we're jumping ahead a little bit. Let's, le, uh, but the for the moment, let us just just uh, justify why we are, why we have, uh, why it it makes sense to allow players the option to randomize. Because by randomization, they are, you know, you cannot be once their security levels have improved, you cannot basically deny them that option. Essentially, they have they have the sec once security level improves, which means that uh, it means that you know if if they could, they would randomize. Okay, all right. So what uh, what I'll show next time is 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 basically the champion theorem here, which is that this is equal. Okay, so all the things that we were, you know, uh, fantasizing about that would happen if v upper bar is equal to v lower bar would now happen for free because v upper bar and v v m upper bar would be equal to v lower bar. Okay, so there will always be a saddle point, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All those consequences will follow, but in the space of mixed strategies, not in the space of pure strategies. Okay, all right.